It's hard to pick one memorable art experience. I grew up in a family of artists. My mother was a sculptor and a pianist, and um, my uncle is, was an actor, and so I grew up in a, in a, 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 a very arts-aware, engaged family. Uh, my dad was an accountant, so it balanced things out. But, uh, and personally, I mean, I've, I'm a writer. I, I know it doesn't look like it because I'm in Parliament, but I've written eight books, and being part of the arts and culture community, most of my closest friends are, are painters and poets and what I consider real writers <laughs> who are producing, you know, my, my best friend was Farley Mowat. So I've been surrounded by the arts in many forms all my life, and it's uh, part of who I am. We have to stop, and I think it's far too common to regard the arts as something that's a frill. And I think in defending the arts, we fall into the trap of commodifying everything again and just counting the economic value of having an arts and culture community, talking about our competitiveness and so on. That's all true, and it's a huge sector, and the filmmaking in my home province of British Columbia, for example, ha creates more jobs than fishing and mining and forestry combined right now. So you can make the economic case, but I think it's really important that we not lose the argument for our soul, that we not lose track of how important it is to ensure that artists can survive. And so I, you know, I, I wince a little when the Harper administration creates wall stars of, of fame to celebrate the arts. And we celebrate the people who've done well in the US. I, I really don't want to make it about celebrity. I want to make it about, uh, as it is, it's part of culture. It's integral to every part of every part of every community. So we need to support artists with better tax breaks and tax relief. I think the models out of Ireland and Berlin are really good examples of how we attract to Canada talent, how we, as Richard Florida talks about, uh, how the creative class attracts investment. And it, it enriches the life of a community. Yes, it airs a bottom line and there's a bank account and it all makes sense to average out the, the tax earnings of artists over time so that it's fairer when you have a sudden, when you have a year when suddenly five years worth of work um, is recognized monetarily that that you can average out that so what might look like in some ways a windfall, but it's five years of work and you've had four years of poverty for one year of income. That should be averaged out. We need to do much more to protect our institutions. Uh, the Green Party policy actually calls for the leadership of our cultural institutions, whether Telefilm Canada, CBC, National Film Board, all of them to have uh, the selection of who leads those agencies not be by a political party but be by a jury of people who actually know what's needed to make those institutions thrive. And of course, you know, steady, predictable, and, and sustainable funding to our arts and cultural entities. And for the health of democracy, the key one is that we've got to protect the CBC and Radio Canada so that they are independent and less um, intimidated, shall we say, by those in power with the possibility of actually being the kind of independent public broadcaster that we need. Yeah, well, I mean, I think the, we've always had the um, caricature of the starving artist, right? It shouldn't be like that. We know that that's what it's like for most artists. Uh, so one of the things the Green Party believes is we have to end poverty rather than deal with it segment of society by segment of society and poverty, create guaranteed livable income. And then when people make income above that level that allows for no one to live, in, absolutely in a country as, as wealthy as Canada, we should not allow any one to be living below the poverty line. We can do it, we can do it relatively easily. So that's integral to our policies overall is to end poverty. That will have the effect of also ending poverty for artists and all the other programs to ensure that we have, you know, that the that local uh, art events are properly funded, that people have an opportunity to to sell their work by ensuring on Canadian content rules in you know throughout various aspects of what might be called an entertainment industry in Canada. So uh, there's no reason for the kids of artists not to be able to eat well but there's no reason for the kids of, of anyone, the kids whose parents are both holding down jobs at fast food restaurants. All children in Canada deserve to have a good start in life, and the only way to end childhood poverty is to end poverty. 
just to say thank you all artists across Canada for making this uh, a country that is distinctive and to celebrate who we are, we must protect our artists. Otherwise, we won't have a distinct Canadian culture and it's, and it's distinct by regions as well. We've got to protect our arts.